scroll chillers are an amazing tool and option we have in our arsenal for just equipment to choose from. And it's something that, especially as a beginner, so many things translate really well. And because scroll chillers are, in my opinion, really built to be cost effective and just efficient as they can be they're also that means that they translate really well there's there's rarely other than the controls package itself maybe which is just a learning curve you're just going to have to deal with if, if you're getting into this and if you're not familiar or comfortable with advanced control packages you really want to start because that is going to be just normal case for you it's that that's we deal with very advanced control systems as chiller mechanics. So get used to it. Other than that, like everything else though is very, it translates, right? The we TXVs or EXVs and they're just, they're very basic. They're simple. They may be larger. Like that's the other thing. It just, it's all the same stuff, just scaled bigger. And if you can really get your head around that, especially air cooled, like you can get into air cooled scroll uh, chillers they're just the same thing as an RTU, just bigger. And we've got a more advanced control package. And you you also have, I mean, what makes the chiller? You got a hydronic evaporator. I don't mean to, de to, to belittle or demean the process. What I'm trying to do is to express that these are good entry points. And if you really just hate working on scroll air-cooled chillers as an example like if if you're struggling there then you're probably not ready to move on into more advanced principles because a lot of the principles to these chillers apply to a regular rtu and like you don't have anything crazy going on with the compressors like from here the compressors get way more complicated the controls get more complicated everything just continues to advance that doesn't mean that if you're struggling you should stop what it means is that before you try to push into other sectors and other markets uh basically uh, say you want to get into screw chillers you, you really have to master or you should you should get your head around and master scroll chillers in my opinion this is just my opinion this is what i would recommend for you then as this becomes kind of second hand and easy you could then look at going into more advanced systems because at least at that point you should have a strong handle on the hydronics and how the evaporator uh, process is happening and water flows and you have a basic understanding of a controls package and systems and how like we're utilizing a condenser fans a little differently um, you know we're using hydronic evaporators instead of an air over evaporator you know, and you could exchange, you know, CFM for GPM, not not in literal number to number. Like we're not talking 400 CFM for 400 GPM. I don't mean that. But with hydronics, instead of having CFM through a coil, we have GPM through a coil as gallons per minute. If you can start to make some of those connections and do that at this basic level, you have a lot less stress and it'll be a lot it won't be as hard as you then get into more advanced systems. And yeah, you should learning re reciprocating like 06 E Carlisle's or something. Um, you should, and you, that's going to be the next module in this course. We're going to get into reciprocating. You should understand this and know it, but you're not going to run into it as much as, nowadays, modern systems as much as you will scr uh, screws. So, there's a lot happening in, in our, what has to happen correctly is a much narrower window with a screw and you'll tear stuff up way faster with a screw chiller than you will a scroll or even a reciprocating. So that's why I say there are great starting points and they're very minimal, right? We don't have crazy oil management processes. We're not doing any kind of crazy loading and unloading uh, procedures, at least not things that you wouldn't see in other applications anyway. And that's the thing, it just, it all comes down to like why they exist. Well, they're just, they're cost effective. And in order for them to be as efficient while move as many BTUs as larger chillers, that's where just the cost of purchasing that chiller 
and the efficiency you get out of it really and the reliability really begins to get outweighed when you can get a more advanced compressor for not that much more if at all more once you look at it from a big picture perspective anyway ho hopefully all of that helps and kind of paints the picture as to for those who are really comfortable with scrolls i get the question well why don't they just take and use all this really great scroll technology we have and just push that and make these really awesome fantastic simple chillers well, that's what it comes back to um it costs too much for the benefits it just costs too much and there's better compressors for that size for something that big they're just better compressors so yeah that's our trade